last video taught you how to use create interface to get the addresses of interfaces and to call their vtable functions. That is the first step of creating a CSGO SDK. The second step is to provide functionality that can get netvar offsets. And that's what we're going to do today. I wrote a guide recently on how to find DW get all classes and loop through those classes to get the netvar offsets. This was something I learned when I was making the GH offset dumper. It's basically the same exact thing that Haze Dumper does, but it's in C++. If you haven't tried it out, check it out. What are netvars? Well, netvars are actually these objects called receive prop or receive properties. And these contain offsets for every network class. The offset is the variable M offset, which we can see right here. So that's the end result is we want to find the right prop in the table and get this offset. Now, receive props are contained in arrays, which are inside these classes called receive tables. You can see the pointers to the receive properties array right here. And these receive table objects are contained inside of the client class object. You can see it right here. Now, all the client class objects in the game are in a linked list. The address of this linked list is the first client class in the linked list which is called the head. When you see the offset DW get all classes in Haze Dumper or in source codes, it's actually the offset of the head of this linked list. And this is what the linked list looks like. It's a list of the client class nodes, and each one of those nodes contains a pointer to a receive table, and each receive table has pointers to different to a receive property array. Each one of those contains an offset, but it also contains pointer to a receive table, and those contain receive properties. So we need a function that can recursively go through all of these and get the correct offset. So how do we find the linked list head? Well, there's a function called get all classes, which is a member function of the iBase client DLL interface. It's a virtual function, so we can easily find the vtable by using class informer in Ida Pro. It's very easy to find just by searching for the string chl client in uh, client.dll. The index of the get all classes Function is 8 in CSGO, but depending on the source engine game you're working on, you'll find it between 7 and 11. It's pretty easy to find once you start looking at those. So here is what that DW get all classes function looks like. All it does is return the address of the offset or a pointer to the uh, client class link list, I, sh I should say. If you were to do it all out in reclass, you can see it right there. That's what it looks like. So I'm going to teach you how to parse this list and and go through it and get our offsets. We're going to do it for the health offset. Just like in our previous video, we got the interface from client panorama by using the specific string for that interface. And then we are able to loop through the end of the list and get the health address of the second client. We're going to do the same thing, but instead of using this function, we are going to use the netvar offset for health. So let's open the source code from the previous video and we are going to rename it. The previous video was CSGO create interface. This is going to be, uh, we're just going to call it netvar manager. And we're going to add a new header file. And this is going to be uh, netvars.h. And we need to get these objects, okay? We need to get the client class, the receive table class, and we need to get the receive properties class. So we go over to our SDK, and you will find them in dt underscore receive.h. We'll just copy each one. Receive table. Paste it in. And then we're going to go to client class.h right here and we're going to grab the client class it's actually small now all we care about is the member variables we don't care about any of these functions because we're not going to be calling any of them so we can just start getting rid of them we can expose the private as public it's not important we can get rid of all these functions and the type def they're unimportant all these functions can go bye bye we can just clean up some of the stuff while we're in here. And then we don't actually care about some of these variables. So we're just going to replace them with void pointers. All that matters is that they're four bytes. Some of these are function pointers, so a void pointer makes sense. So let's go through and overwrite them. Now we should be able to compile. So that looks all good to me. We need to uh, include uh, windows.h up here. 
Now we can get access to int pointer. So we need two functions which are going to loop through uh, the linked list, and one of them is going to be a recursive function. So we're going to do int pointer underscore t get offset, and this is going to be receive table pointer table constant char pointer table name uh, constant char pointer net var name, and we're going to do a for loop. It's going to be for int i equals zero i less than table m underscore p props i plus plus and this is n props for number not pointer and then we're going to do receive prop prop equals table m underscore p prop i and then we're going to do if not string compare prop dot m underscore p var name net var name then we're going to return prop dot m underscore offset otherwise we are going to do if prop dot m underscore p data table int pointer underscore t offset equals get offset prop dot m underscore p data table table name net var name and that then we're going to do if offset return offset plus prop dot m underscore offset and then at the end of this we're going to return zero so this is our recursive function basically it's going to it's going to find the number of properties in the array. It's going to loop through all of them by grabbing each one. It's going to string compare uh, the net var name that we're looking for against the variable name. And if we find it, we're going to return the offset. If we do not find the matching string, then we need to keep going down through the table and we're going to call get offset again. So this is a recursive function and then you have to use a recursive function in order to, for this to work correctly. So we are going to do a function that's going to call this function, and it's going to be called get net var offset. So this is int pointer underscore t, and it's going to be get net var offset, constant char pointer, table name, constant char pointer, net var name, and then client class pointer, client class. And inside here, we're going to get a client class pointer called current node, and we're going to set it to the client class that we pass in then we're going to do for auto cur node equals client class cur node cur node equals cur node m underscore p next and then we'll do an if statement uh, if not string compare again table name current node m underscore p receive table pointer m underscore p net table name and then we're going to return get offset uh, current node m underscore p receive table table name net var name and current node needs a lowercase n client class needs an uppercase c And then if that fails, we're just going to do return zero. That looks good. Now we need our iBase client DLL class. So if we go back to the SDK, we are looking for this interface right here. Again, interface is an abstract class. We see down here, get all classes, okay? And we don't need anything else here. All we care about is that we're going to be able to index into the eighth index in the VTable array very easily. So let's just grab the name of it and let's go over here and we're going to do a class iBase client DLL public and then we're going to do virtual void fn0 equals zero defining it as a interface right and we're just going to add a bunch of those in there so zero one two three but our last one is going to be our real function and that's going to be a virtual client class pointer get all classes and set that to zero and so that's the function we're going to be calling
So now we can go to DLL main and we can, we've got our client entity list. We're going to do basically the same thing, but we're going to use a client class. Uh, we need to go up here and include netvars and we're going to do vclient18. This sometimes changes. So if it, I think it was 17 like a month ago, but now it's 18. If you run into an issue with that, look for strings in the, in IDA again, and you'll get it really easily. And we're going to cast this to an I base client DLL. Put that in as, there as well. And this is going to be called base client DLL. And it, it looks like I made a mistake on this last video because of order of operations on the, um, comparisons and stuff we need to wrap that there we go we're going to do something else in a while loop we're going to get the client class pointer by calling a base client dll get all classes u in pointer underscore t health offset equals get that var offset and we're going to pass in dt underscore base player m underscore i health you should all be familiar with that offset and then client class. And it's not working because of what? Ah, I capitalized the V. Okay. Then we're actually, we're going to get the client entity the same way we got it before, except we're going to get, we're just going to cast it to an address, right? U int pointer. And we're just going to get the address. And then we're going to do int pointer health equals uh, int2 plus health offset, right? And we're going to cast this to a int pointer. And then we should be able to do uh, int health. We're going to output pointer or value of health. I think that's right. All right, we got a problem, some compiler problems here. Syntax error, receive table. So we need a forward declaration up here because receive table isn't, it doesn't know what that is. The compiler doesn't know what it is. So we can fix that. So now let's put a breakpoint right here and let's attach our Visual Studio debugger. We are going to inject our DLL and it's going to break. Perfect. So get interface is going to get called. We've already seen that. We're going to see base client DLL now has a proper address right here, which is a good sign. And we are going to call get all classes, which is the vtable function from our base client that we just got the interface for. And that's going to get us the address of the first client class in that linked list. You can see it got an address, which is good. And then we're going to call get net for our offset. Now the offset we're looking for is mi health. Now this is offset from many different classes, but the class we want it from is dt underscore base player. I believe that's the name of the receive table that our health offset is going to be in. And we're going to pass in the address of our client class, the first one in the linked list. And so let's step through that. It's going to make a copy of that. I don't, I think that's a redundant line of code. I think you can remove that. But yeah, we're going to start with the first node in the linked list. And as long as it is not zero, this is basically just a way of saying not zero, then and then we're going to set on each iteration, we're going to set the current node to point at the next node, basically walking the linked list. And then we're going to look at the current nodes receive table that we're currently in. And we're going to look at the table name. If it matches the table name that we desire, then we will return the offset. And to get the offset from that table, we need to call get offset, which is going to recursively go through those up here and find the correct offset from the right table underneath the right property. So we can click continue now so that we get into our get offset function. Again, like we already showed you, that's what it looks like. We're just going into every single one of these and looking for the offset. And then we go into the next client class and look through all of them and then go to the next one. As long as the table name matches. If the table names don't match, we just continue. So what we'll do is let's just put, um, there's two different returns it can do. Sometimes it'll find it up here and return it. Other times you have to keep going and find it in here by looking uh, at the table at the data table, okay, and calling it recursively. So we can click continue and get rid of our breakpoint. Hit continue again. It's now found our offset, and we can step over. And now we are back here, and we're going to return that offset. So now our health offset is 0x100, 
And this is from our previous tutorial. We're just going to get client entity number two. That's the client ID number two from the entity list using the previous interface we got. And now we're going to get take that address, add health offset, and cast a pointer. So now health is the health is at this address right here, and it points at 0x64, which is 100, an integer. So now we're going to see out that. So we can click continue. Let's go back to CSGO. Oops, let's uh, we can get rid of these breakpoints. And we can see that it is working. I've got only one other bot in here, so he's entity two. And each time we shoot him, we see his health goes down. So there you go. That is how you parse the netvar link list and get netvars. Second step of making an SDK. Once you've done these two things, you are all set to do absolutely whatever you want in CSGO. That's all you need. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos, and peace out.